That was not cool. Okay, there's something coming out the bottom. Where? Liquid. Look underneath. Well, that's a shame. Let's see what damage we've done. Let's go and look at some Austin Allegros. Finally. Come on. Claire, this way. Righto. think uh, how long have we lived here five and a half years yeah six six years be six in october i think right so about five and a half years and i think i drove this off the truck here right and it hasn't moved since so no. it's, so it's really it's a barn find we're on brand Yay! <laughs> right let's get this right out of the way just for now Suspension needs pumping up, as you can see. Now let's move this crate. No, that's fine there. You Thank sure? you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, there's only so much I can move. We'll have a quick look and see whether we can get this thing to move under its own steam. Otherwise, I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to get the recovery truck somehow, and it's not easy getting access down here. So let's see what happens. Just turn it a couple of times, please. Stop! Let me try it somewhere better. And again. Stop! Doesn't look like there's a spark at the moment, so I'm wondering. Um, hey, what that lead is. Um, oh, joy. All right, can you hop out a sec, please? I'm starting to wonder if there's a switch or an isolator or something. Right, let's try it with that switch. Where's my pliers? Just quickly. Yeah, stop. Yeah, that's it. It's got a spark. Yeah, so that, that's the ignition switch. You'll see all this later. I don't know if you can see me on film at the moment, but um, this is not a standard start procedure for this vehicle. And we just, I think, worked it out. So I'm just going to clean the plugs up, Claire, cause I, or see if I've got a spare set. Yeah. And then we might stand a chance. But that's what that switch was. If you could flick that switch up for now and turn the key off. Yeah. So you found some spark plugs then. I have found one set and we're going to... Um, keep the old ones because I've got a feeling we may have the same issue with the other car but I thought we might as well put those in and have a chat with you. Yeah so <laughs> the former owner of this car or owners of this car and the other car which we'll be showing you later yeah um, they're, they're quite interesting aren't they they're quite an interesting bunch of in classic car enthusiasts. It, yeah say? I know of three of them I think I met two of them and I've seen the other one, and yeah, they're, they're, um, you've done a bit of research after I mentioned them to you. I have, so for those of you watching at home, um, a gentleman's club, as it's described on the website, <laughs> of um, classic car enthusiasts was formed. They called themselves Allegro Motorsport. You must check out their website, it's very funny, and has such distinguished members as um, Mr. Waddington Minge Esquire and uh, Bernie Eccles Cake. So yeah. I wondered what he'd been doing since he retired from Formula One. So they did some fun and exciting stuff. They took these cars, obviously modified them and took them over to the Marn and uh, Goodwood and all sorts of places. Um, so many fun times were had with these cars, I think. If I remember correctly, this one used to tow 
a caravan that was in a similar livery. Ah, in golf livery. Yeah. I'll have to see if I can find a picture of that. So what attracted you, Elton, to this particular car? The fact that it was available and an Allegro, to be honest, Claire. <laughs> um, oh, come on. There must have been more than that. No, honestly, I love... I, I bought my first little Allegro, had so much fun with it. Um, and just, yeah, I just love the cars. I think they get so much bad press. And I think, it, you know, if you wanted to go around the Nürburgring in record time, yeah, don't buy an Allegro, unless it wants to be the slightest one around there. Um, but we talk often about, you know, smiles per mile. Yes, definitely. I have had so much fun with Allegros, um, not just for myself, but seeing the comments and the stuff on the internet. Um, it's great, absolutely great. It's, you know, why wouldn't you? It doesn't have to be about having the flashiest car out there. And as you'll see, you've spoken about the guys who own this one, their website. Those guys had such a, well, probably still do, such a camaraderie and um, fun times with it, doing all sorts of things that perhaps if I, you know, if they'd have had more precious, expensive cars, they wouldn't have felt inclined to do. Yeah. I'm, Hoped to live, you know, carry that memory on and keep them running. And then life just got in the way. And I feel quite bad now that they're sat here like this. So, you know, we're not going to make promises. We've done that with this flipping YouTube thing. Um, but I will try and get bits done here and there in between the day job. You know, I was buying these for sort of five, six hundred quid a pop not that long ago. Um, they're probably... I don't know, 550 now. Mm. <laughs> now they're a little bit more. You see them coming up on um, eBay quite often, the Legros, and they still get all the knockers and the people quoting Jeremy Clarkson and stuff like that. But people who've had them. Sorry, Mr. Top Don. <laughs> people who've had them, this is the reality of it all. We're not wheel a dealer. Um, I'll tell you, they, they, they're great little cars. I think the little red button below the start switch is an off switch if it does fire, all right? Okay. Because you might need to hit that pretty quick, all right? Oh, now you're worrying me. Well, yeah, because if petrol's everywhere, I need you to switch it off bloody quick, all right? Okay. Um, I think there's been a cat walking over the windscreen. Yes, <laughs> our cat, no doubt. Okay, ignition on, switch down. Okay, so folks, there's a bit of an interesting starting procedure to this ignition on this flick switch thing here there's no lights on the dash so you need to press the top don thing that is pressed ignition's on all the way around the key oh now it is yeah that was my mistake good to give it a little pump on the petrol as you do it as i do it yeah please just give it a go all right switches down Whee! Whee! All right, press the kill switch. It's Keep it pressed until the car turns off. That's All it. Right. Ah, clutch is stuck. Oh, God's sake. Now what? Be careful where you're standing. Right. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh, but it is kind of funny. Sorry? Nothing. That is properly stuck. <laughs> it's moving, but not how I anticipated it would be. No, uh, now, <laughs> now we're stuck in gear. Oh dear. I'll tell you what, you don't have to buy some good cars, Elton. Yeah, it was good when I bought it. <laughs> this is down to my neglect. Did the wheels turn? That looked like it dragged. I don't, I can't see. I'm so busy looking at the camera shot, I'm not looking at what the car's doing. Okay. Looks to me like that one's locked. I'll try it again and you never know, we might get lucky. <clears throat> Trouble is, if it does start, it's going to keep moving, Claire, all right? Okay. The 
The wheels went round then. Good. <laughs> um. <laughs> Can you pump the clutch for me, please? Yeah. Trouble is, we're running out of jump pack and everything now. Pump the clutch? The clutch, yeah. All right. Yeah. Right, just do it now. Yeah. All right, it's all moving, so it is clutch itself, I think. Okay. All right, thanks. Excuse me, please. Oh, dear me. What a palaver. So I could probably get it started then. It's not moving. I can't see what I'm doing. Right, hang on. I'd love to say that I'm looking at the face of concern, but she's laughing. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see I don't, This is just too funny. On the plus side, I think the clutch has gone free. <laughs> I can't see anything. I can't put the bonnet up, a black dirty windscreen. I need to hurry up because once we stall it. Yeah, I know, I know. I've got no power now. What, it felt like one of the wheels wasn't turning. Okay, I'll have a look. I'll find out if we've got some brakes soon as well. Yeah, I guess so. I've got no wing mirror that side, that was all right. Sounds all right though, doesn't it? Yeah. Apart from the black smoke and everything. <laughs> <Not at all. laughs> turning. Can you see the front please Claire? You are. Have I got enough room in the front? Yeah. Something is dragging like mad. Well the wheels are turning. I don't feel like it. Unlucky. I could hear a noise. I thought it was a siren, but something's going. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just jump started again, but I'll just clear the windscreen for now. Am I allowed to do that? It's a barn find. It's got genuine barn <laughs> dust. You're allowed to do that. And I'm about to devalue it. Yeah. There you go. It's on the road. 2017. It's an Allegro Motorsport. Stan, they must have all been together somewhere. Lovely. At the Cars on the Green, Bury St Edmunds. Nice. Yes, right. Back to the jump pack and we've got one bar left. Oh, okay. Nice little bit of jeopardy there for us. <laughs> it's like on life in jeopardy. <laughs> I do, now, it's funny because um, I'll be honest, anyone watching this, that Claire has encouraged me to do this. I wasn't. I've got so much to do at the moment and I wasn't all on board, but when I'm in there and I'm hearing it and the smoke's pouring out and I can't see and yeah, everything's a, going wrong, I love it. because It's that's, a good laugh. That's what I like about it. I don't like everything to be um, all straightforward. It's made me laugh. I'm looking at this, look. Mm. I've still got the bungs in a battery. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, dear. <laughs> I think that one's all right because that's got a breather hole in it. So that probably goes down like that, I don't know, certainly that one, I think. 
Should be in there. No, that's a solid bung. Right, I'll just um, start her up and whiz around the front, Claire. Okay. Arse. Forgot to wipe the screen. That was not cool. I've no idea what that noise is. We're dragging Summit along. No idea what that noise is. Interesting noise that. Ah, I see what's happened. It's the wheel arch. On the wheel? Yeah, look. Because it's because it's wonky on one side because of the hydro gas, I presume. Yeah. It's rubbing the wheel arch on the tire, look. That's what it is. There oh, look. Sweats. Because look, if you look at the back. Yeah, yeah, no, I can see it, Claire. I don't need to look at the back. Right, um, let me get out of the way and see if we can pump that up. I've got a pump somewhere, but last time I used that, that was seized. Well, that's a shame. Let's see what damage we've done. Uh, rolled arches. Um, I can't remember where everything is now. So under here, you've got like, it's a bit like bike nozzles, if I remember. So long since I've done this, clear. <laughs> we've got a hydro gas pump. I'll just go and check we've got some fluid. There are somewhere under here are two nozzles, I believe, and you just put it in and pump fluid in and get the pressure up. They go down over time. That side looks all right, doesn't it? Yeah. So what are you up to here then? I'm trying to remember how to do all this. Just putting some um, hydroelastic fluid in the machine. The machine, as I suspected, is a little bit seed looking. Right, let's get everything out of the way. The trouble I've got, I haven't used this for a while, and I remember last time I had to free that off. I've just put some WD on it and I'll just check it's not too seized. I don't want to force it and break it, but I need everything to work. You said I need eye protection, didn't you, Claire? It did say that on the instructions. Oh, God. Too much? Um, maybe a little bit too much, <laughs> but... Can't be too safe, dear. <laughs> No, I've got glasses. Don't think we'll be welding today. Let's hope not. Oh, God. <laughs> All right. We'll just have a little quick look at this. I'm sure you're going to edit most of this out because it's yeah. going to be dull, but... Um, cool. See, as far as I remember, that screws on and then you tighten it up with that. Is that what it said? Don't know. Mm. There we are, I think we've got it moving. It'll do up that way, will it? Yeah. Right. Do you want to just quickly check what it says then? Right. Ooh. Let's have a look, folks. We'll read it together. Um, I think I just sprayed you. Fill the machine reservoir with the correct fluid. Set the valve to pressure. 
Connect the vehicle hydroelastic slash hydrogas fluid by turning tap R fully clockwise. Sounds pretty straightforward to me, Boo. Hmm. There was some bleed thing I didn't understand or care for much. All right. I'll find out in a minute. Yeah. You got your eye protection on? I'm not doing it yet. Oh. I'm just going to see what happens. Yeah. Because that's how that's I roll. Your, that's your <laughs> usual approach, isn't it? <laughs> I can't remember. I can't remember if it says on there what the pressure should be. Um, I can't film and look at the instructions at the same time. Um, and I was told that women could multitask and men couldn't. Mm. I bet I could film and pump at the same time. Yeah, well, I bet I could film and smack your bum at the same time. <laughs> that's a video I wouldn't mind making. Mm. I'm only getting a little bit of pressure at the bottom of the stroke. Yeah, I can't really see much movement. Well, it's going up. We're up to like 200 whatevers um, PSI. It's a lot of, lot of pressure. It's not, you know, not like a car tyre or okay. a push bike. It goes up to quite a lot, but I can't remember what it should be at. And you've nicked my um, destructions. Hang on, let me have a look. I'm just going to go by sight anyway. We're not going. It doesn't have a. Oh, it's on the back here. It's not a standard wheel anyway, so it will need to be quite high. Allegro 340 psi. Yeah, so we've got a little way to go. Yeah, we're up to about 250. Okay. I've got repetitive strain injury. <laughs> to go with your sciatica. I know. I'm going to get a full bingo house soon. But I, my feeling is that that's running out. Yeah, look, we've got air in there. Are we running out of fluid? If I undo this, am I going to cause all sorts of problems? Or oh, there... God, it says about pressurising and stuff on here. Yeah. Hang on. Yeah, nothing's blown up yet. All right. You don't have to worry, love, don't you? Well, <laughs> <laughs> One of us often I'm proved right, my dear. That's why I worry. So we're up to just over 300 PSI. Yeah, and it wanted to be 340. Threads just aren't my thing today. I'm struggling with them. Right. Yeah, but I think it needs to be a bit more. It's struck. It's, yeah. Right, let's get rid of all this air. I don't know if you'll pick that up on the camera, but now we've got solid fluid going in. Let's have a look. There we go. So now it's all green. Yeah. A minute ago, it was full of air. It was. And you don't really want to be pumping air in there. So it's showing 350 at the moment. Right. But like I said, we're on a, a bigger wheel there, so. Okay. That was a good thing like this. So you can see it's clearing it now. Um, you could sit them up like, like they were on airbags or something before. I always used to overfill mine. I'm assuming I just... Um, well, just read the instructions for goodness sake. No, nah, we'll be all right. Oh, God. You mean the instruction bit here where it says warning? Yeah, that one. Slide the valve to depressurise. Yeah. Both the pressure and vacuum gauges are isolated during the depressurising sequence. Before opening the system on the vehicle, Slide the valve to pressure to check the pressure is zero. Yeah, don't do that. What I want to do is this. Just like do stuff up and undo it and things. Yeah, but if you if the pressure is within the system when the valve is put to the vacuum position, damage to the vacuum gauge may result. Yeah, whatever. I bought it. Stop Such shaking your head at me. Um, because you just won't follow the instructions. Oh dear. They're not there for fun. So is it supposed to be sunny all day today? Ugh. Oh dear. You can actually see the car going down if you look. It's leaking underneath so there's a leak. Oh dear. All right. You need to investigate that. Yeah, so I won't be moving it far. What happens when you leave cars too long, you see? Just mind that fluid. Yeah, it's actually the pipe, I can see it. <laughs> oh, has it come off? No, it's pissing out, there's a hole in it. There, it's corroded. 
that's a shame. Yeah. So that will go down in the next few minutes. Okay, so what do we need? A new bit of pipe? Yeah, I don't know how easy that is to replace, never done it. Yeah. A little fountain under there. Oh well. That's a shame, that ain't going to last long. At some point that will need doing properly. I'll need to take the wheel off and get in there and do that properly. Yeah, uh, that's better. <laughs> yeah. Shame it's leaking now because it's going to do it again in a minute. This really is going to be a lick and a promise because the hose is down there. I ain't moving this car anymore. So, buckets, you notice there's two of them, Claire? Yep. I've just wet it. Look at that! <laughs> and I tell you what, before you start, my dear, because yeah. I know this will please your artistic <laughs> side. Go on. This will make some people horrified, all this <laughs> rubbing, all this mucking. Um, go around the front of the car, please, my darling. Yes. Because I know little things please you, look. Oh, the sun strip. I'll have to, I'm not tall enough. You should have got yourself a taller man. Look, <laughs> I could have reached across there. <laughs> that right. sun strip's brilliant, isn't it? You love a sun strip. Oh, I do love a sun strip. Right. I'm afraid you're going to have to put your camera down in a minute, my love. Yeah, and get, get your hands dirty. Get spongy. Shall I, shall I film you for a sec just to prove that you do actually do something? Oi. <laughs> Cheeky sod. <laughs> you could try to look happy about it. <laughs> I do actually work around here. <laughs> to be fair, you do most of the car cleaning. Exactly. Right, I'm going to join you so they don't need to see everything on YouTube, do they? No. I do. I was having a spot of bother trying to get into the car, yeah. And I was having a peaceful time around the corner. Um, this is why I didn't MOT it when I first got it, because although it's MOT exempt now, it still has to meet MOT standards, and you need to be able to open the door from the outside. At the moment, you can't. So when, when they designed the Allegro, they didn't think of all these things, did they? <laughs> they didn't think so, of installing scissor doors, did oh, they? These are factory. So can you show me what the cord was that you pulled there? Because I couldn't really see that. A piece of like a washing line or something hanging there. All right. <laughs> Technical then. <laughs> yeah, it's good though. <laughs> and it looks the part. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. It but looks, yeah, if we uh... can work out a way, to be honest, it shouldn't be that hard um, to open it from the outside in case of emergency. Hmm. And then, yeah, that will be one hurdle overcome. We've already found another with that pipe. Yeah, on that note, does anyone in the comments know where we can get a pipe, a replacement pipe? I think the spheres may be okay. Right. But until the pipe's done, we won't know for sure, because normally no. the spheres that go as well. Um, but yeah, we could do with, that's a 1500 spec LE, and we need the offside hydroelastic pipe, whatever they call that. Right, so whilst Elton is sorting out the other Allegro that we're going to take a look at today, I thought I'd show you inside. Um, you can see there, there's the, uh, the uh, interesting door arrangement there going on. Um, we've got some cool little bits and bobs in here actually. Love the little Michelin man, that's very cool. And love the theme with the golf stickers continuing throughout, that's pretty cool got a uh, fire extinguisher and it must be extra special because it's got max power got the gear stick there as Elton I think mentioned earlier this one has five gears so uh, yeah fantastic 
aftermarket Kenwood stereo there. Don't know if that works, we'll have to try that a bit later. And yeah, some of these dials and gauges will be familiar to those of you who've perhaps been in or owned an Allegro. And I think this looks like this was probably the original blue before it was obviously sprayed and stickered up with all the golf livery. Don't suppose any of you know what colour that is. That would be good to know. So how are we getting on with our second Allegro that we're featuring today? Well, I've just moved the dead Volvo that was in front of it. Yeah. Um, I seem to remember, Mr. I don't know how I got a bad back. I remember pushing this up that big old slope in front of you. Right. So I couldn't get it started last time. I don't remember how much effort I put in. So I'm going to actually put some petrol in. Okay, that's the start. We don't have much juice in the jump pack, so I may have to go and find some jump leads and a, a jump vehicle. So this was another car that was in the Allegro Motorsport fleet. And I do believe from their website, it is famous for not only driving into a beer tent, it could be... Seriously? Yes, seriously. <laughs> but also managing to hold up four lanes of traffic on the QE2 bridge because it overheated. <laughs> I don't feel so bad about the time it overheated on the A14 now. Oh no, when was that? That was a few years ago when I lived in Felixstowe. But all it was, um, I changed the radiator switch. I think it cost me about three or four quid. Oh right, okay. And it was fine after that because I used to use this for going to work and back in. And that was when I lived in Felixstowe and worked in Saxe Mundham. Had a workshop there. And um, that's a good sort of 20 odd miles, I would have thought. Yeah. So, yeah, it's done, I've done some miles in this old one. I don't really know why I stopped driving it. Probably you. <laughs> <laughs> if in doubt. <laughs> <laughs> if in doubt, Claire gets the blame. Blame it on Claire. Before Claire. <laughs> My life was full of Allegros. I love this though. I love the way they've done all the martini livery, which obviously the Formula One Williams team have stolen. Yeah, obviously. oh yeah, totally ripped them off. Totally ripped us off here. Um, That's very cool, all that. There's another one in the fleet that I, I have seen. Yeah. But not like, you know, been in or... And I don't think I'd ever get the opportunity to buy, especially when they see these ones. Um, <laughs> yeah. And that was the V8 one. Oh, wow. That is a serious bit of kit. I believe it's built on Corvette running gear, but please feel free to correct me. Um, yeah, that's a beast, that thing. Um, but these were kind of my kind of thing just to show for a cheap car. You could have fun. Yeah. Four-door rally. Yeah. You'll see a two-door car later, Allegro. And there's an irony that this one's the four door and that one's the two door, but wait and see. <laughs> okay. um, all I can do is try, but I haven't got any ramp there at the moment. So even if it starts, I'm not going anywhere. No. The ramps are next door. I'll go and get those. If it starts, I don't think it will. I, I've got one bar of juice because I've been using it on various vehicles today. Um, choke out cool chokes a bit stiff right that's a bit odd are the lights on um headlights. Yeah, yeah they were yeah yeah that's all right uh, it's the trouble that that little jump start it lets you have a little doesn't like you to over crank it um so I might need to go and get some jump leads and use a vehicle to jump start it and see what happens. 
I was hoping we'd get some fuel up. This is where I could really do with a third person. I put a little bit of... Oh, that's nearly out as well. Everything's running out, Claire. <laughs> there we are. Let's get I don't know, but there's a lovely smell of petrol and easy start going Laughing on. gas, yeah. Yeah. Right. Oh, and it pressed me knob again. We'll give it one more try and then I'll have to do something a little bit more severe, Claire, all right? Oh, God, okay. That's not a big deal, but... Might have to do it in a minute. What's going on here? No, it doesn't like me at the moment. I'm doing this all wrong, by the way. I'm wondering if that's died on us. So that's a bit of a novel setup, my dear. Little trolley, battery, and jump leads. And I've just hit the headlights on again, haven't I? Oh God. Are they off? No, they're still on. Um, off. Right. Got to remember which way everything goes <laughs> on these things. <laughs> yeah, it's um, I just grabbed a, there was a battery in the workshop, so I just thought I'd try that first. Okay. I'm literally just going to see if anything happens, all right? <laughs> Nothing there. Oh! Oh! There's, there's a, little. a little something there. Yeah. There's something coming out the bottom. Where? Liquid. Look underneath. Oh. Well, if the other one was anything to go by, it's going to be petrol, isn't it? Hold Where? It down. Oh, yeah. On top of the oil patch. That looks like petrol, isn't it? Um, can you do me a favour? Can you just go in the car and turn it over whilst I yep. have a look, see if I can work out where that's coming from? Oh, wow, well, hang on. Um, yeah, go on then. What? Do it, turn it over. It's not in gear or anything, is no. it? No. Stop. Ah. Well, at least we know it's getting petrol, Claire. Oh, yeah. Um. Ah. Right, I'm... Going to call time on this one, Claire. I know you want to film it, but can we do it in situ? Yes, I can show people the car in situ. Right, I'll show yeah. you why. Look, yeah. um, I do need to check this properly. If you come to where I am in a moment and film from my angle, right, to the bottom of the carburetor, I will turn it over once just to show you, but you'll okay. need to come like from a nice angle here, right to the bottom. Can you see that? Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Right. I'm just going to turn it over. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. That's dripping, yeah. Yes, that's a, that's a fire waiting to happen. Yeah, no, we need to We're stop there. We're in a there. wooden barn. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so um, I'll address that. It's not the end of the world. That'll just be something stuck in the carburetor. It just needs okay. free enough, probably a float or something. To be continued, folks. <laughs> yes, but you can talk about the car. Yeah, we can go. I can have a look inside. So that's a job for another day. What I will say is if anyone can give me a heads up on what it, the easiest route to fix that, that will help me out because I've got a list, a list, and this is a whole part of this video is just to show how behind we've got with all our projects. So any pointers, let me know. We'll get that one sorted. That one will run, that'll be fine. I, I assure you that car will be all right. It's sitting all right. You can drive that one soon if you want. Yeah, I'd love to. Okay. I've just packed up. This is for Claire. <laughs> and everyone else is watching. <laughs> I just want to show you one more thing. Sorry, I'm gonna to have to walk right in front of the camera, Claire. Um, I talked about fun, fun, fun. Yeah. This car, you're going to have a quick look inside soon, aren't you? Yeah. Um, but it's got a CB, as you can see. I think there's an aerial somewhere. There is a bloody great aerial on the, uh, on the roof, yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it's got like, it's got a really cool. Well, say cool. Most people are going to be like. <laughs> <no>. <laughs> Yeah, I think you got the point. I think that's enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's fun. There's loads of fun stuff on it. You'll see it when you have a look around. Right. So that's a shame we couldn't get this moved today. But hey, that's another job for another day. I am going to show you a little bit of the inside of it because, as Alan said, it's quite fun. So we've got an old CB radio there. 
I remember my brother used to be really into CB radio stuff. And uh, that was quite the thing back in the day. Got an aftermarket Sony stereo there. And that's the uh, little box of audio fun there. What have we got? Cat, rooster, horse, dog, cow. Gosh, endless possibilities, I'm sure. And there we go. There's the dash. Pretty sure this is one of the later Allegros, the Allegro 3. Yeah. Be nice to get this one back on the road. Have a little bit of summer fun. So finally we've come to the one that should have been at the start really because this is the one that started this video and prompted Claire to get us to talk about these Allegros. A few of you noticed this in the background on other videos. Mentioned it, we went to Rustaval with our Austin A30. The likes of Trev if you're out there watching this. I do listen to what you guys say so I said we'd talk about them and we are. Um, this was my first Austin Allegro. I wanted a fun car. I wanted the worst, you know, worst in inverted commas, British car I could find for sale at the time. I was looking for a Maxi, and I'm saying worst in inverted commas, everyone, before you start jumping on me. Couldn't find one, and I bought an Allegro. I chatted to the guy I bought it from. It was his granddad. He told me all about his granddad, and he was absolutely lovely, a legend of a man. He'd sadly passed away, and I said to him, I feel like I owe it to your granddad to enjoy this car and have some fun with it. I had many years of fun with this. First of all, I dressed up as an old man in a jacket and a pipe and a hat. And then I just had this idea of doing it up as a Tesco value wedding car. And I turned up to an East Coast Retros meet. I had cans, I don't even know if they're still in here actually. I should have prepared this earlier, Claire. Yeah, look, so I had, <laughs> remember the old traditional weddings where you had cans off when the bride and groom left the reception? <laughs> yeah. I had those hanging off the back. I, Pulled up outside the car park at Shotley, put them on and drove in. I had a top hat, bow tie, <laughs> at the works. And um, I used this car a lot and it got so many laughs. And then the clutch went and the piston rings needed doing as well. Took the engine out, had all these notions of putting a faster engine in, which I got built. And then life just got in the way. So it sat gathering dust ever since. Um, and really, someday I need to find some time to come back to it, but I'm sure you're all in the same boat. Life always seems to have different plans for you, but there you go. This is the one that started it all, and I don't know at this point whether Claire wants me to tell you another little story about Allegro's or not. Go on, give us another story. So, I grew up in Essex. I'm from Essex. Years ago, I was watching a little video of a guy who came over to the UK from I think New Zealand in the 80s some point, and he strapped a camera on his car like a dash cam. What, like a cine camera? Cine? Yeah, yeah, an old school proper camera. Um, you know, no, nobody did it. And he drove through a village where I grew up for some of my life called Rowhedge. And I thought, oh, look, cool. He's coming up the road where my nan and granddad live, or lived, sadly passed away now. And lo and behold, not only was my granddad's Allegro outside, but my granddad was washing his car and had to move in to let the guy pass. So the chances of that are like a million to one. It was almost like destiny yeah. that I was going to have Allegros and I already had them. Brilliant. It was. Well, I hope everyone's enjoyed this little video, this little peek into the chaos of our world and these free Allegros, do let us know what you think of them. Um, we'd love to hear in the comments, wouldn't we? Yeah, but please be gentle. Look, I'm doing yeah. my best here. <laughs> <laughs> so there you have it. I've got to wrap up. Please, honestly, genuinely like, subscribe, share, because we need to build those numbers up because apparently it matters to some people. Um, and we'll get back to you. We'll try and be a little bit more regular with the videos. We've had a little hiatus, but Everything you do helps to motivate us and we really genuinely appreciate it. As those of you who have met us at Rustable will know, we love you guys. Thank you. Bye.